Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, bad news uh, for, I think, everyone, but the Azov uh, battalion commanders and the Ukrainian uh, families, and for the Ukrainian, the guys in charge of Ukraine. Bad news for uh, people who really believe that, uh, you know, a contract or a uh, negotiation ended up and you know, signing some documents really means anything. Um, and that is uh, what happened. The Azov battalion commanders that were in Turkey were released by Turkey and now they are back in Ukraine. Uh, if you remember, the Russians captured this um, Azov battalion. They call them Nazis and um, they're commanders, commanders of Nazis according to the Russians. And uh, before uh, February 24th, 2022, that's how these guys referred to the Azov Battalion, but then they changed the tune. They forgot about it. Um, articles and videos are still available with how these guys here in the West described the Azov Battalion prior to the war in Ukraine. But hey, that uh, shows you how uh, honest these guys are. So, um, the Russians uh, captured the um, commanders in Azovstal, in Mariupol, if you remember. And uh, that was in uh, May 2022, in the end of May. They surrendered and they got captured, taken to Russia, uh, debriefed a little bit over there. And then, very much surprisingly, they were exchanged for some Russian military with the Ukrainians, but on the condition that these Azov battalion commanders will stay in Turkey. That's where they're going to reside until the hostilities in Ukraine end. So uh, until the end of the war. The negotiation was uh, brokered by or, you know, supported by Turkey between the Ukrainians and the Russians or the Ukrainian side and the Russians. Got my words? Okay. And then um, they were supposed to stay over there in Turkey. Now, Turkey somehow negotiated with Ukraine, according to Ukraine, Ukrainian guys, and uh, these guys ended up, the Azov battalion commanders, in Ukraine. The Russians obviously say, uh, what's going on here? And for me is, well, kind of glad that you got that again. You got again in your butt again. Why? Because it seems like the Russians refuse to learn. Well, if you refuse to learn, then that's what you get. Uh, let me uh, ask you a question. How many times you allowed to be before you react and you say, uh, I don't think I trust you anymore. Two times, 50 times, 3000 times. Obviously, the counterpart and the issue matters. For instance, if someone, I don't know, uh, no, cheats, you, cheats on you with, I don't know, $1, ah, you know what I mean? And he, let's say, is your son and tells you a little lie here and there. Ah, okay, ah, okay, okay, ah, whatever. But let's say your wife cheats on you first time. Well, that's the last time too, I'm hoping, because you're going to be bye-bye. Otherwise, you're going to do like Russia. You come back or you're going to be cheated again. So Russia was already cheated by the West, with NATO expansion, 1991 and 1992, remember? Oh, no, no inch eastward NATO expansion. Remember that one? That was the first one. The second one was, if you remember, the Minsk agreements, one and two, again. So why would the Russians go and negotiate again? How many times? Because if you negotiate something today, and tomorrow you want to renegotiate the same thing, I don't have the certainty that the next day you're going to negotiate something you negotiated yesterday and that you negotiated again the day before. The things don't really work that way unless you, I'm not going to negotiate anything with you because you're not a trustworthy partner. So I think Russia got too many times to understand that there's no way what's written with these guys and signed. And Lavrov said this a while ago. They forgot. So let me show you about four articles here with this news. And I'm going to show you um, 
uh, some videos and I made and I was very angry that the Russians uh, did this exchange of the Azov battalion commanders with the Russian uh, troops. And I will explain why I was very angry. I have about three videos over there. Let me show you. Let's start with the videos that I made them with the date. You can go and watch them. I'm not going to uh, repeat myself here too much. So this was the first one. Russia releases Azov regiment commanders. That was September 21st, 2022. The other one, why Russia released Tararab commanders from Azov battalion. This is where I'm the most angry, actually. On September 22. And then Chechen Kadyrov, very unhappy, blistered by Putin's release of the these guys. And all right, let me tell you in before I go to the other articles, why I think it was idiotic. If you said that these guys were Nazis, that's why they claim the Russians, all the battalion uh, uh, regiment, including or uh, Azov battalion or Azov, or Azov regiment or and their leaders, the commanders and so on, if you claim and you really believe that's the case, how can you exchange them? How can you exchange them? Th that was my first point. They should be trialed, right? Brought in front of the law. And then they would get the punishment, whatever you found for those Nazis. Correct? Correct. You don't exchange them. Imagine that, let's say, the Americans would have captured, let's say, which they did, Henry, uh, Heinrich Himmler. Well, and he killed himself. It was the Brits, actually. But anyway. Let's say they, they capture one of these guys and then Argentina says, you know what, uh, give, let's do some exchange. We give you Eichmann and you give us uh, Himmler. And you go, okay, no problem. Is that how it works? Is that, is that, is that how it works? No. So now let me show you the... So if you thought that were, those were Nazis, you don't exchange them. You try them. If you find them guilty, punishment, jail, whatever is the punishment according to the crimes committed. Or if you didn't find any crimes, then don't say they're Nazis. All right, I'm not going to go into that. Now let's go to the articles here. I'm going to start with this one first. Ukrainska Pravda. Russia accuses Turkey and Ukraine of violating agreements on Azovstal defenders. Saturday, 8 July 2023. Okay, so just blow me. What are I going to do about it? Nothing. You should have thought before you did it. Another article here. Kremlin calls return of Azov leaders to Ukraine a violation of existing agreements. Well, again, what are they going to do? Nothing. Now, Zelensky's office explains how Azov-style defenders were brought back. And this is what he says, or the, the, the office. Results of negotiations. And in the first paragraph, the first sentence, five commanders from Azov-style iron and steel workers uh, works were brought back to Ukraine on Saturday following negotiations with Turkey. Well, I know that uh, the whole thing was not between Ukraine and Turkey. It was Ukraine, Turkey and Russia. It was moderated by Turkey, but it was between Ukraine and Russia. The Turks did not negotiate shit. The only thing that they were probably were the guarantors that those guys would stay in Turkey at the end until the end of the war. That's why the Russians say And the last one is Turkey's release of the Ukrainian neo-Nazis. Why do you call them this way and then you release them? Why do you call them that way and you release them? You, you um, how do you call it? You swap them? I don't know. They, they contradict themselves. Both Ankara and Kiev have broken a 2022 prisoner exchange agreement with Moscow. Dmitry Peskov has insisted. Correct. It says, allowing former commanders of the neo-Nazi Azov regiment to return to Ukraine is a quote-unquote direct violation of the 2022 prisoner swap deal between Moscow and Kiev. Not between Kiev and Ankara. That also involved Turkey. Kremlin spokes involved. Not as a, you know, it was between involving Turkey. Turkey. Kremlin spokesman. Earlier today, five previously interned Azov commanders from, flew from Turkey to Ukraine on board of President Vladimir Zelensky's plane. The Ukrainian leaders hailed the development as a return of heroes and published a video on Facebook of the man boarding his aircraft. Zelensky was on the short visit to Turkey on the invitation of Turkish President Erdogan. Both, I'm quoting, both the Ukrainian and Turkish sides breached the provisions of the deal in this case, end quote. Peskov said, commenting on the release, he also said that Moscow had not been duly informed, 
informed of Ankara's decision to hand over the five Ukrainians. Turkey was apparently, quote-unquote, forced to take this step ahead of the upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius, the Kremlin spokesman said, adding that the Turkish leadership had to demonstrate, quote-unquote, solidarity with the military bloc uh, and that Moscow was well aware of that. Yet, I'm quoting, a breach of an agreement flatters no one, Peskov stressed. Ankara has so far not commented. Under the prisoner exchange reached on September 2022, Five commanders, including top Azov leaders, top Nazis according to the Russians. What happened with that one? Nothing. Where, where to stay in Turkey until the end of the conflict between Ukraine and Russia? Well, who knows? Maybe the conflict ends tomorrow and that's why these guys were transferred. Oh, I didn't think about that. What do you think, my friends? Do you think that's what it is? <laughs> yeah. At the same, at the, at the time, President Zelensky explicitly stated that Kiev had agreed to that condition. President Erdogan, Erdogan had offered protection to the five Ukrainians. All of them were captured by Russian defense, uh, Russian forces and Donbas mili militias in spring 2022, following the lengthy siege of Azovstal steel plant in the port of city of Mariupol. Hey, maybe the war ends tomorrow. That's why they, you know, in anticipation, they just, you know, got ahead of their skis. The skis left behind and are going downhill. So, however you want to uh, take this one, that's, uh, again, the Russians got, again, great job, good job. Well, I hope you will never learn. Um, I, you, you might say, well, it was not Russia's problem, it was... Uh, Turkey's problem. I think that those, if you labeled those commanders as you labeled them, there was no way, watch those videos, I make my point over there enough, clear enough, there was no way that you should have released them, free them. You, 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 I don't, I don't have to go back to the Nuremberg trials or with the other guy who shot himself and all the other guys, okay, with, uh, okay, that's good enough. So I think this is BS, but that's what it is. Uh, pressure, no pressure from NATO. That means uh, NATO did not have anything to do actually with those prisoners. It was nothing between NATO. It was about Turkey, Russia and Ukraine. And Turkey's problem with NATO has nothing to do with those guys over there, by the way. So that's just justif that justification, I think, coming from the Russians is just a, a way of uh, uh, saving face. I don't think so. Your face was spat on, was uh, calmed on, was everything on. And what did you do? We're going to retaliate. Okay, like that. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.